Today I'm going to be sharing with you guys how we grow blue-green algae, specifically Arthrospira plantesis, aka spirulina, which is one of the most nutrient-dense foods on the entire planet, so stay tuned for the video. Alright y'all, so like I said in the intro, what I'm going to be doing today is sharing with you guys how we grow Arthrospira plantesis, aka spirulina, which is a blue-green algae in our grow space alongside our microgreens. So this is something that I've been wanting to grow for quite a while. I've really always been really interested in the sea and algaes and kelps and things like that because they're just an incredible powerhouse for nutrients and they're one of the most beneficial things that you can grow and support. Uh, but I hadn't actually gotten around to growing it until I watched the movie Stowaway. My dad told me he saw it on Netflix, the movie Stowaway, and I fell in love because it's basically an Asian version of me in space. It's a guy who's doing experiments with microgreens as well as growing algaes to basically talk about what it's going to be like to colonize on uh, Mars and how they would grow it on Mars and do those kind of experiments to see if it'd be possible to grow produce on Mars. When I saw this, I literally just lit up because it's like literally, like I said, an Asian version of me. I love growing microgreens. I love doing experiments with them. It's all we've done for two years. I just had not gotten around to the algae aspect yet. So whenever I saw that, it lit a fire under my butt and I was like, it is time to actually start growing some of these algaes. So that is exactly what I've been doing over the past two weeks. I have been testing out many different ways of growing uh, this spirulina. And I've got to say, I found a few ways that don't work and I found a solid way to get some really, really dense cultures here. And what we're gonna be doing today is transferring over this little culture I got right here. We're gonna check out how it actually looks underneath the microscope. So we're gonna see what these little bad boys look like under a scope. And then I'm gonna show you guys how we're gonna move it into a big five gallon container right over here that I just got. And we're gonna just share with you the entire process. I'm really excited. I'm actually like really nervous to do this because this is something I've been so excited about. And I can't wait to do this. All right, so let's go ahead and get this bottle over onto our table and let's take a look for the first time ever. I haven't looked at any of these since I started growing them. I got my first cultures in and I just started replicating, 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 replicating. And we've lost two batches. We've lost two three gallon jugs so far to different nutrient combinations. We tried some with Master Blend and it was just way too weird of a, a nutrient for it. Uh, and But we've really settled on Ocean Solution. We're gonna talk more about that here in just a moment. So let's get this pulled off the shelf before I just keep rambling about how excited I am about these. All right, so one thing you may be noticing is I've got aerators in all of these. So one thing that we gotta keep happening with all this blue-green algae is it loves to be agitated. If it doesn't agitate every so often, what's gonna happen is all the algae on the top are gonna get all that light and none of the algae at the bottom are gonna get that. So what we've got is all the little bubblers going in here that constantly keeps that water just slowly kind of rumbling here. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this pulled out and set down. And this is the weirdest moonshine I've ever made. <laughs> God almighty, that's good, son. Woo! I am so excited, y'all. Like, seriously, I'm like a kid again. This is so much fun. So like I said, we've been growing microgreens for like two years. We figured out every way that you can grow microgreens. And the fact is, no matter what light you use, what nutrient you use, soil you use, types of medium, they all play a factor on how it's gonna affect your crop. And I've just never done it with anything outside of just microgreens. So I'm really excited to start playing with the algaes and stuff like that and see how the different lights affect it, how the different nutrients affect it. Like so far we've already learned what doesn't work for some nutrients and what does. Okay, so the first thing I need to do is, this is a really dense culture. So this is like super healthy and happy. This has got a ton of algae going on in here. And what I wanna do first before I replicate this is I wanna make sure we've got only our spirulina in here. Now, spirulina is an extremophile, which means it can survive in really extreme environments. Uh, hence, it's also it's able to uh, survive in fresh water as well as salt water, but it, it can also uh, maintain itself in really, really high pHs, which is why people really like growing this one because other uh, algaes and bacteria can't really live in this high of a pH. So I think our pH in here is around 10.5 to 11.5, which again is really high on the basic range. Uh, so what I'm gonna do now is let's get a little sample. I've been growing it for two weeks and I haven't looked at it yet under a microscope. My hands are like shaking, I'm so excited. Look at this, this is gonna be so hard to get a little sample here. <laughs> so I've got a little microscope, we got it hooked up to a camera. If I can keep my hand steady enough, I'm gonna separate my slides here. I'm gonna tip this over to the side so that I can carefully now get a little sample of this. Whoop, look, look how shaky my hand is. It's the best <laughs> I can do to keep it steady. <laughs> I'm like so nervous, excited for this. So I'm gonna do two drops, <laughs> my hand. 
All right, so we did three drops right there. I'm just gonna set this to the side now. Oh, I'm seriously so excited. <laughs> All right, and we're just gonna put together a slide. I haven't done this since I was in high school, y'all. And I'm gonna slide this underneath. Oh my God, my hands. I'm like, the anticipation is so real. Okay. All right, we are in, people. All right, let's get this slid underneath the light. And let's see how it looks. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come around to the other side of the table so I can hang out with you guys and operate this bad boy. Okay, so we are on photo mode now. Let's see if I can get this. All right, so I'm not seeing a whole lot right here. We are on four times, so we need to bump up our scale here. Let's see if we get anything better. No, so we're getting some little water droppies, but that's not what I need to see. Let's go in even tighter. So these are really tiny, and I haven't actually even tested if this microscope can go to the level that I need it to. Let me find it with my eye real quick before I do the, uh, the camera here. <laughs> okay, you guys, what I had to do is I, I separated the two slides, and I just put a single drop on there because I think what happened was uh, whenever I smushed it, it kind of pushed them all away. But I think we are looking good. So you can see right here. Hold on one second. Let me get this up better for you guys. Wow. Okay, so let's get a little bit closer. You can see how sensitive this thing is. Oh, this is so cool. So we have... It looks like I'm not seeing anything in there that is negative. Oh my god, this is so wild, y'all. All right, here, let's go in a little bit closer now. Let's check out... <gasps> 40 times. Oh, no. I pushed it into my... <laughs> I pushed it into my lens. <laughs> All right. Microscope newbie over here. Hold on one second, let me clean off my 40 times. I was like, it looks like it's really close there, and it's because I was smashing it into it. Okay, come on, calm down, CJ. You see just like the slightest little movement. So that's just the water movement kind of on its own there. That is so cool. So what's really cool is you can see, wow, I mean, it is just really susceptible to all the, like my voice shakes the water. So the cool news is we're seeing all those awesome spirals, which lets me know this is exactly what I want. I'm not seeing a bunch of other like little parasites or anything in there or other different algaes. Oh my God, you guys are so cool. <laughs> I am seriously so excited. Okay, cool. So we have an awesome culture of blue-green algae here, especially the little spirals of the spirulina, which is just too cool to look at, man. Look at that. Look how sensitive this is. And it's just the water kind of moving it on its own on that slide. So this is really incredible. Now that we've kind of confirmed what this is, how I'm going to take this one gallon and I'm going to turn it into boop, five gallons because I want to keep growing this stuff. And as soon as I get a few five gallon cultures, then I'm really going to begin harvesting this and taking care of it. But I'm just oh, so excited. Oh, got it. I was just hoping this whole time, I was like, I hope it's the right culture because it's getting really green and that's all I, you know, I didn't have the microscope at the time. I just bought it for this and it was so worth it. So worth it, so worth it, so worth it. Okay, now let's focus, CJ, focus, focus. So what we're gonna do, again, we're gonna take this one gallon, turn it into five gallons. To do this, I need some uh, sodium bicarbonate, which turns out is baking soda. So you guys wanna get pure baking soda, stuff that you use for cooking, and uh, this is what I use. I think you can also use potassium bicarbonate, but I'm not sure 100% uh, on that one, but I know for sure uh, sodium bicarbonate. And what I'm gonna do is, I found that the best ratio that we've had success with is 60 grams per gallon of uh, water that we're gonna be adding. We do um, s sodium bicarbonate. Since I've already got this right now, this culture right here is uh, already filled. This is already at the right pH and everything for me. I don't want to uh, not compensate for that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm only gonna measure out four gallons worth of water uh, for this because this one's already got the 60 grams in it, if that makes sense. So what we need is 240 grams of uh, pure baking soda here, AKA sodium bicarbonate. So I had to move the uh, microscope out of the way because I didn't want to get this covered in all this uh, sodium bicarbonate. So let's start over here and make sure we get a good measurement. All right. so. I'm going to start just kind of pouring it in here, and we're looking for 240 grams. Right, we're going to pause at 180 because I know that's an interval of 60, and I'll just do another 60 after this. So I'm going to go ahead and, uh, Mandy, would you be so kind as to get me a stainless steel bowl over there? Yeah, I already sanitized it for you. She already sanitized it like a trooper for me. So that's one of the main things with this process, sanitation. Sanitation is key. You want to keep everything nice and clean because you're gonna be breeding algaes and you wanna make sure that you're only breeding the right kind of algae that you're growing. 
So I'm gonna take that uh, 180 grams, pour this into my stainless steel bowl, and in just a minute, we're gonna start mixing this with some water. So I'm gonna get this back onto my scale. And we got an, another 60 grams to go. I wanna touch over, that's all right. Yeah, it's close enough in science. All right, so I'm gonna take that, put it in, boop, 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 give it a triple science tap, and now what we're gonna do is, uh, I'm gonna take this over to my sink station over there, turn off my scale, I can taste that sodium bicarbonate floating around in the air. <laughs> I just tasted it in my mouth. Damn, it tastes just like I thought it would. Okay, so we're over at our sink station. I've got my stainless steel bowl here with the uh, sodium bicarbonate in here. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna kind of, oh, not use jet mode. <laughs> we're gonna put this on full and add some water. And we're gonna basically want this to go clear. So I'm gonna add probably up to about this line right here, which is gonna let us know that's about probably 3.5 quarts of water. Boop, boop, boop. We'll do it to 2.5. 2.5 quarts of water. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my, I've already sanitized. This is a little stainless steel straw that I actually use for a part of my bubbler system. And I'm just gonna take this and we're gonna begin twirling this. And we want this to go from this kind of really milky, cloudy down into almost a very clear liquid, which is pretty surprising whenever it happens. It feels like science. Everything is science. <laughs> Everything is cool when you're with me. And everything is science when you're spinning with me. And that's how you get away with, was it a... Uh... Copyright? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let's get it up to the 3.5 that I was talking about. All right, so it's getting a lot more clear here. As you guys can see, we're starting to see the reflection now at the bottom of this bowl means this is beginning to absorb really quite nicely and it's nearly ready so this is close enough for me for right now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set this aside because I still need to let this sit for a few more minutes as I actually sanitize this now I just got in this low density polyethylene LDPE plastic now there's a fruit grade plastic that's BPE or BPA free oh my goodness all the different E's and A's and all that um, so this doesn't have any like bad plastics in it or whatever. And basically I was trying to get some more of those uh, glass carboys. But every time they would ship it to me, it would break. And I was like, okay, well, let's just wait here. Uh, let's try out these plastic ones and see how they go. Now this is just really a lot more affordable. I can get three of these for the price I can get one of the uh, glass ones. Uh, so in the long term, it's going to be a lot better for um, finances. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so what we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and add just a little bit of water in here. I need to get this sanitized, like I said. So let's go probably right about here. Very science amount. I have no idea how much I just put in there, but I know how much of this I'm gonna put in. Now this is sandy clean. This is used for um, brewing and stuff like that. So this is something that I know that I can use uh, in a food application for uh, a liquid specifically. So this is sandy clean. Uh, this is something we've been using a lot of because it's really quite easy. It's got one of these little side things right here. Where all you have to do is you have to push and it'll go ahead and fill up this little guy. I'm going to do right there, just below the uh, half an ounce mark. And let me lift this up so I can do this without splashing it. You do not want to splash this in your face or your eyes or anything like that, so be very careful. Boop. So we got half, nearly half an ounce of that in there in this low amount of water. And what I'm going to do is take two seconds here. I'm going to grab the cap for this. That way I can shake this around. All right, I am back with my little cap here, so I'm gonna go ahead and just make sure this screws on nicely. This is my first time threading this. There we go. Get a nice thread, not cross-threading it. And we're just gonna start mixing this guy around. I want this to be nice and sanitized. For sandy clean, they say uh, two or three minutes uh, for contact with the surface that you're sanitizing. So what I'm gonna do is uh, kind of take a few seconds here. I'm gonna take this guy off. We don't need this right now. Just slap in the bag. All right, there we go, less noise. So I'm just gonna keep go, kind of doing this little number. We're taking a cube here and we're trying to get all sides nice and sanitized because I don't want any bad stuff growing in there. This is, a, rave. this is a cube dance, you have a cube dance? <laughs> cube dance. <laughs> all right, so that's pretty good there. I'm gonna let that sit for about a minute and then I'm gonna do that again. So time passes now. All right, so we are doing our last little swirl here. We've waited our three minutes, and this is nice and sanitized now. Now what I'm gonna do, nice. Nice. So what I would do if I was doing multiples of these, which I probably should have done now in hindsight, is I would pour this into my next container to uh, sanitize it, and then just kind of keep that going uh, for all four containers. I wouldn't do it any more than like three or four containers though. 
Okay, I got most of that out. I'm gonna switch my spray nozzle here over to cone, which means it's gonna spray in a nice big arc. And that way I can get, Never mind. It works better for the car boys. We will use, let's try flat. There we go. Actually, that technique worked a lot better for the car boys because what would happen is the cone would go down all the sides, but this is a square, not a circle, CJ. So technically it's a cube, not a cylinder. We're getting really specific about it. All right, now I just need to get all my sanitizer out. So just kind of carefully, don't splash yourself in the face. Don't want sanitizer face. I'm gonna repeat this process two more times. So three rinses after I've sanitized and we are done. Get the little drippy, 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 drippy. All right, drippied out. I left my funnel inside, so I will be right back with the funnel. All right, I got my handy dandy little yellow funnel here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit this with a quick food surface sanitizer, Purell. Boop -a -doo. And let that sit for about 30 seconds here. And now we wait. So one thing about spirulina is it really grows better in like 80 degrees Fahrenheit. I, I forget what that is in centigrade. Um, so what we've actually done with our grow space is it's now, you can take a little peek over here on the very bottom, 84 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, Fahrenheit. Um, so we keep ours between about 80 to 85 now, whereas whenever we're growing specifically microgreens, it's usually about 75 to 81. So we're keeping it slightly warmer in this grow space to account for the uh, blue-green algaes. But, you know, we get a little bit more sweat in here as we film, but I like it for my algae and my superfoods. Okay, we've been through probably 30 seconds now. Let's hit this. Yeah, that is clean now. Let me get the outside just in case. Okay, cool. So now what I'm gonna do is, you see this, this is that sodium bicarbonate, that baking soda that we had. You can see how it's basically completely clear now. Again, science. Uh, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna pour this into our new big reservoir here. Swirl. Okay, and if you guys are curious, what this is, is this is um, gonna, number one, raise that pH super high uh, for this water. And remember, we did this for four gallons. So what I need to do is now I'm gonna fill up our, um, our reservoir here with about four gallons of water. And if you're curious, we actually put our water through a single stage um, filter that filters out a lot of the heavy metals and chlorine. So it pulls out like leads and stuff like that as well as chlorine. Um, so that's what we use for this. If you guys are just using regular tap water, one thing that you can do if you have a very high chlorine content in it is you can actually uh, fill it up into a bucket or some kind of reservoir and just leave the cap off for 24 hours and most of that uh, chlorine will actually evaporate away uh, because that will actually kill your um, algaes. Facts. That's why it's in your water. All right, so we are probably around the four gallon mark. I don't know that this one actually has the uh, measurements on it, but you know, it's three quarters of the way full. It's probably around four gallons. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go grab my algaes and we'll be right back. Okay, so I've got my beautiful little spiral blue green algaes here that I am like really hyped about. And what we're gonna be using for a nutrient source that I almost forgot about that my lovely assistant Mandy reminded me about is we're gonna be using Ocean Solutions 2-0-3. This is what we've had the best results with because it's got a ton of minerals from the ocean. So it's got a little bit of nutrient added to it. They have Ocean Solution Pure, which is just nothing but uh, the minerals that they use from the sea, the pure version of the concentrate of like all the sea minerals. Now this one does have a little bit of N and K added to it, nitrogen and potassium. So uh, what I'm gonna do is I use it at a ratio of 0.5 ounces, so half an ounce per gallon. So what we need to do, since we are gonna be adding four uh, gallons, is I'm gonna do two ounces total. So we got one ounce right here, and straight down your little chute. Oh, I'm gonna touch over, that's all right, because science. All right, cool. So we got two ounces of that ocean solution in there. That way they have something outside of just the uh, sodium bicarbonate, uh, the carbon in that, they can actually live off just that, but I like to add a little bit of nutrient, give them a little bit of a boost, they grow faster and healthier. So now we get to the exciting part where we're gonna start duplicating these guys. So they're moving into their new home now, and we're just gonna take our little moonshine jug right here. And now that I, now that I see like the little, little flakes in the water, it makes me think of all the cool little algaes that are hanging out. So we're gonna pour this directly into this new mixture here. And this is gonna be their new home for the next, probably about week until this greens up really dark. And then what we'll do is we'll 
um, likely do a harvest at that point. All right, so I'm not gonna pour anything down at the bottom. Looks like there's a little bit of stuff down here at the bottom. I'm not gonna try to get any of that. We've got a ton in there right now. Everything looks super happy. So that's what we're gonna focus on. All right, let's get this now moved. I've never picked this guy up. Wow. All right, let's get the lid on just in case. Boop. And let's get it over to our shelf. All right, so I've been working out. Ooh. Yeah, bro, do you even lift algae? What? What's up? Bro, what are you talking Listen, about, man? It's a good way to test if it's watertight. I should have probably tested it with water before I filled the whole thing up with my blue-green algae. All right, let's get this onto our shelf right here next to our carboy. Bam. All right, so we're back over here at our shelf. Let me make a little bit of room because this is a little bit tight now. But she a thick girl. She a thick one. Let's get our lid removed here. And now we just need to get a bubbler going. So I'm gonna take this little bubbler here. Oh, try not to get it hung up on my car, boys. And we're going to, oh, let's see here. This one likes to curl a lot. Let me do something. Give me two seconds. I'm gonna find a little connector for this. I got supplies everywhere. Bam, okay, cool. Okay, uh, you can see in these kind of, it's really hard to see through these carboys, but it's a 45 degree um, elbow here from a shark bite. These are little plumbing quarter inch outside diameter uh, connectors and they do a really great job of holding number one the tubes as well as these these are actually just little uh, reasonable drinking stainless steel straws that we got from the grocery store so they work really well to sanitize and they fit perfectly into here I mean they slide out kind of easy but the main thing is they do hold in there well enough for us to uh, use it for this purpose so I'm gonna put half of that in there I'll take my other half I'll do my little connector here push it in make sure it's nice and snug and bam now this can you'll see See, before, if you look over here, that the tube was curling really hard and I was only getting the surface. Now I'm able to get this much lower down in the actual reservoir here. And it's gonna start kind of circulating all this water a little bit lower than it was before. All right, so that is literally it at this point. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave all these guys just chilling here on the shelf. Uh, tomorrow I'll probably come out and I'm gonna move uh, this one, this one, and that one over into these plastic containers. Uh, that way they have a bit more room. Uh, we can uh, begin breeding them a little bit stronger. And then I'll see you guys uh, probably in about a few days to a week from now to actually start showing you how we harvest, dehydrate, and use these, which is going to be one of the awesome parts of this because it's like, cool, you can grow it, but what are you gonna do with it? And if you guys are curious too, another great benefit of what people do with uh, growing these algae is they'll put them next to um, places that put out a ton of carbon, for example, or CO2 rather. Um, so what they'll do is they'll put these algae plants right next to say like a concrete plant or some kind of uh, production manufacturing plant that uses a ton of or produces a ton of CO2 and that way they can pump it directly into this because the algae is the blue green algae really do love that and it's a great way for that company to number one reduce its CO2 output as well as uh, the, the growers of the algae to have that beneficial additional nutrient um, for free. So. Yeah, I just want to stare at these forever. They're just so beautiful. I'm so happy right now. Like I've been looking forward to this for quite a while and I'm finally doing it, people. I'm finally doing it. So that is it for today's video. If you did it, if you did it. <laughs> if you did it. If you enjoyed it, please give us a thumbs up. If you dislike this video, give us a thumbs down. If you have any questions or comments, please leave it in the section below and we'll get an answer for you as soon as we possibly can. We have an ebook right now that is for specifically growing microgreens. As you can see, we have all these different colored lights over here. We do all kinds of experiments with microgreens. We've done it for two years, over two years now. And I would consider us one of the experts in the industry around knowing how to grow microgreens, what effects lights have on them, what nutrients uh, have effects on it, as well as there's information in that ebook about uh, our grow space, how we use it, how we do it if it were commercial, what we do with it right now, and all kinds of really great information in this ebook. It's only 16 bucks. So uh, be sure to check that out if you guys are interested in learning about microgreens. And eventually, we're going to add in some sections around algaes as soon as I learn a little bit more on it. If you guys are curious, our Instagram and our Facebook are both at On The Grow Farms. And our website is www.onthegrow.net. Thank you guys so much. Have a great day and keep on believing.